So how do you get your first coding job? Here are the steps. Number one, learn the fundamentals. Number two, now with the nerd eyes, you'll be able to figure out the job market and the type of coding that you want to do. So let me explain. There are many different types of coding programming you can do. You can do web stack, front end, back end, full stack. You can do game development. You can do AI development. There's all kinds of, I, just, I could go on and on and on and on. There's a huge difference between say front end web development versus back end. There is a huge difference, even bigger, doing mobile apps, native mobile apps with iOS or Android Kotlin, for example, versus front end web development. You get the idea. So before you can make a good decision about which particular specialization you're going to want to go into as a developer, you first need what I call or the nerd eyes, the ability to understand that landscape, which is vast. The coder landscape. Think of it this way. It's hard for you to judge what is the best TV for you. Plasma, LCD, well, who uses plasma? OLED, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sony, LG, Samsung, whatever. How are you going to decide what is the best TV for you if you're blind? You need to be able to see. So if you want to get into web design, excuse me, you want to get into development, you first should learn the basics. Once you learn that basics, those basics rather, you'll be in a good position to be able to judge which way you want to go. So you'll be able to look at the job market, figure out where the demand is. You'll be able to look at, well, you'll be able to, to decide, eh, I kind of like uh, building mobile apps in iOS. All right, kind of like, uh, writing code for IoT devices with C, you know, that's all legitimate. And, uh, but it's hard for you to make that decision until you at least learn the basics. So you gotta learn those fundamentals, you gotta learn those basics. Then that decision will be, ma will be makeable. <laughs> so let me take away a fear, an irrational fear that people have. You cannot choose the wrong language in terms of ju jobs. All the programming and, and all the different programming specializations, there's lots of work. Now, depending where you live, there may be more work in this versus that. So let's say for sake of argument, you learn to do this type of program. Let's say, I don't know, no JS. And then you learn that and then you go out there and you find you can't get any jobs in no JS. It's like, oh, where are the jobs? And you're like, oh no, I wasted all this time learning Node and, and the real jobs are in uh, PHP and Drupal. Ah, what do I do? Well, it's no big deal because once you know Node and JavaScript, for you to pivot to so many other technologies will be like this. So it's not a big deal. So you can't choose a wrong programming language. That's another myth I wanted to spell. So what's the other uh, point I want to make here? So. We got all that done. So number three, once you figure out the type of programming you want to do and where the jobs are, remember, you got to look at the job market. You may love flash programming, but there's probably no jobs in that, right? So anyhow, so you figure out the type of coding you want to do. You make sure there are jobs in that type of coding or jobs that are accessible to you. And then you align your skills accordingly, meaning you learn uh, what you need to learn to be able to do that kind of work. Once you've done that, what you want to do is go out there and find two to three small projects for you to do in that technology. So what I do in my mentoring program, I teach the web stack and plus Python and databases. Why? Because it offers the widest range of jobs, widest range of uh, places where you could work. It's the king of freelance, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, I have people doing who learn with the web stack and end up doing uh, non-web stack stuff. So anyway, what you do is you do two to three projects. What I have people in my mentoring program do is I have them go out, first of all, they build their demo website. Then they do go out there, do two to three small freelance projects for free. Uh, the whole time they're being mentored by me and supported by the group. Uh, once you've done those three things, now you're gonna have practical experience, which is gonna give you confidence and is gonna give you that track record that you need to be able to land a job. When you go in to get a job, 
whether you're freelancing or go work for somebody, when you can show, look at the work I've done for actual companies, small companies, could be a coffee shop, whatever, your chances of getting a job have increased this much. All right, I hope that helps. Bye-bye. Now we're going to do thumbnails. All right, thumbnails.